<clears throat> Hi, I'm Ray Young. I'm an emeritus professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm continuing with my series of lectures on the Polynesian cultures of the South Pacific. And today we are going to continue our discussion of features of Polynesians. We've discussed a, a number of these features already, and today we'll be emphasizing tattooing, dance, and plant usage, starting the use of looking at plant usage. Now, Polynesian tattooing has been used for thousands of years and is considered a sacred ceremony. It was called tatau in Samoa and kakao in Hawaiian, similar uh, words. The ceremony is performed with chants with, and prayers for spiritual power, protection, and strength. The, uh, the tattooing was performed with these, this set of instruments shown at the, uh, at the right of the slide. Uh, basically, the tool was a, a bone structure or a tortoise shell carved into a comb-like structure, dipped into a dye, and then tapped with another stick uh, to, ins uh, to insert the tattoo on the skin. And usually, it was done with a group of people around the uh, recipient uh, to add support and to, to chant and sing along during the tattooing procedure. Uh, the tattoo was a mark of rites of passage, genealogy, and personal achievements. Uh, it was could in, in, in indicate uh, positions in the hierarchy of the culture, and it was believed to uh, be a part of the amana, or the spiritual power being displayed in the tattoo. In the ancient times, almost everyone was tattooed. And you can see the designs on the Samoa man, they're sort of similar to the Lapita pottery with linear lines of geometrical motifs. Uh, there was also tattoos of uh, pictorial depictions of animals, birds, and objects. And you can see the elaborate tattoo of the Marquesans on this uh, man with uh, anthropomorphic features on his knees. Um, tattooing was uh, performed extensively in, in ancient Polynesia. Uh, was also performed on women, a modern depiction shown at the top. The Hawaiian woman at the left was drawn during uh, Captain Cook voyages. Generally, the women were not tattooed on their upper body or chest, mainly the arms and thighs, uh, sometimes the lips um, and, and the faces in the Maori. Um, Shown as the Samoan woman with a typical Samoan tattoo, the woman in the center is an Antalya woman, the original uh, ancestors of the Polynesians. She's an Austronesian woman from Taiwan and she has some tattoo marks on both sides of her face indicating maybe that the tattooing originated in uh, Southeast Asia. The Maori tattooed the faces and this could be a very painful procedure. Oftentimes they would uh, groove out the face to make it very predominant, add the dye in and, and tap, tap, tap the dye into the face. And as I mentioned, the women were tattooed uh, on their lower lip in the Maori culture. Okay, let's look at a Polynesian dance as another feature of Polynesia. The dances were also accompanied by chants or songs, and these were stories of creation, royalty, lineage, and other significant events in the, in the, the people. The Hawaiian dance was a gentle swaying motion with hand and arms uh, and hand and arm, arm movements. Um, and, and along with the chant, which was called an oli, or the song amile. And the, and the swaying or arm movements could represent nature, as a tree swaying or a wave in the ocean, or a feeling of emotion, fondness, or yearning, or people, places, or events. Uh, now, hula was characteristic of Hawaii. Uh, there were other dances performed in the other Polynesian islands, which we'll discuss. But it, it uh, varied from sacred inspirational in ancient times to entertaining in modern times. Uh, the ancient uh, hula, called kahiko, was religious, honoring gods or in praise of visiting chiefs, and performed in their honor with discipline and harmony. Usually the chiefs would migrate in ancient times to different villages, and the hula would be performed by men first, and then women. It was performed by both men and women, as it is today. In the modern ahuana, uh, hula is the Western influence, but we should remember in 1820 the missionaries denounced the hula as he heathen and banned it. But in 1880, King Kala Kaua, the Mary monarch, uh, stated that hula is the language of the heart and therefore the heartbeat of the Hawaiian people, and he brought hula back into their culture. 
and the last reigning monarch of Hawaii was Princess Lila Ula Kalani, and she stressed the importance of hula to the culture of the ancestors. And today, it's a part of the Hawaiian identity, and it's um, very, very well known in, in the uh, Polynesian Hawaii islands. Uh, as I mentioned, in other Polynesian cultures, it was a different dance in Samoa. It was typically a siva dance, which was sitting, and this would involve more upper body and hand and arm movements. Uh, whereas in Tahiti, it was a very uh, vigorous dance with rapid hip movement, and you'll often see this today actually in Hawaii. And in Tonga, it was the laka laka dance, and this involved a lot more hand rotating hand motions. And you can see that the uh, Tongans have their typical tapa clothing, which we'll discuss later. Okay, uh, I want to start our discussion of plant usage, which we'll continue into the next lecture. I'd like to start this out with a picture I took on Savai, on the, uh, an island in the Samoan uh, islands, uh, and this is uh, uh, how they live today, actually, and uh, since ancient times, in their Samoan Fali hut, uh, or Hali hut, as it's called in Hawaiian, uh, there's a there's, it's an open type structure, a thatched roof. You can see the, all the taro planted around it as a food base. The coconut tree is a food base. There's paper mulberry trees in the background as a source of their uh, fabric material for clothing and so on, which we'll discuss later. Okay, examples of food plants used in Polynesia are, are listed here. Taro, breadfruit, coconut, yams, and sweet potato. It's important to note that most of the traditional Polynesian plants didn't survive in the cooler temperate climate of New Zealand, and the Maori, the original Maori, had to use bracken root ferns and tea plant for a food source till they developed a, a more uh, modern source of plants. Uh, taro was particularly important in Hawaii in their culture. Uh, the tuber is grown underground in these great taro plantations, which uh, they can grow on wet or dry land, and it was typically mixed with water and ground into poi, which was a very bland type of uh, starch base, but it served the culture. In Tahiti, they would often add coconut to the poi to increase the flavor. But the typical Tahitian plant uh, was the breadfruit tree, and a breadfruit could be as big as 10 pounds. They were large fruits. They could be scraped, cut up, and baked. Uh, again, a rather bland type of, of food. Should we remember that uh, Breadfruit was also an emergency food in uh, Tahiti and the Marquesas. Uh, but what they would do is open the uh, breadfruit, uh, breadfruit and pour in seawater, let it ferment, scrape it, and then stomp it into a pulp, which they wrapped in tea leaves and buried. And this could be stored for months, even up to years, as an emergency food source. So in the uh, French Polynesia, this was an important emergency food. Finally, we want to talk about the sweet potato. It's called Umala in Samoan, Kumara by the Maori, and interestingly, it's called Kumar by the Quechua Indians of South America. Uh, how did the sweet potato, this is from South America, uh, and Tor Heyerdahl, a Danish uh, explorer, wanted to prove that the Polynesians originated in South America by uh, building this balsa raft uh, boat structure. It was called the Kantiki, and he, he sailed this in 1947 from Kalao in South America uh, all the way to Varroa, uh, south of the Marquesas and east of Tahiti. And he did this without just the wind power and the current power. And he said this was proof that, uh, that he had developed, uh, that the Polynesians originated in, uh, in uh, South America. However, we know today that this is not true by, from our archaeological evidence we discussed earlier and, uh, and, and DNA evidence that they are Austronesians from Southeast Asia. It took him uh, about 100 days and we went 4,000 miles in the Conti to get to the Polynesian islands. Okay, that ends my discussion of the Polynesian cultures uh, uh, in this session and next time we'll talk further about plant usage. Thank you.